Welcome to another edition of Coon Rod's Corner, brought to you by the Rogers Corporation. Today's topic, thermal management of microwave PCBs, with your host, John Coonrod. Okay, welcome to Coonrod's Corner. My name is John Coonrod. I am a market uh, development engineer with Rogers Corporation Advanced Circuit Materials. I'm going to spend the next few minutes talking about thermal management of printed circuit boards. And uh, the topic is actually a very detailed topic. Uh, just for the few minutes here that I have, it's going to be a basic overview of it and give you some of the ideas of uh, the major concerns. So to begin with, um, the uh, microwave circuits that are used in the uh, printed circuit board industry, they typically have two sources of heat. One is a, a heat source that could be an active device that's generating heat, and that is placed on the printed circuit board. And then the other source of heat could be the actual circuit itself that is heating through RF power being applied. Now, both these scenarios can cause different um, situations for thermal management. And for this uh, session today, I'm going to talk mostly about RF heating of the printed circuit board. So to begin with, I'm going to talk a little bit about the thermodynamics and how that relates to printed circuit board technology. And it's pretty simple. And in the case of heat flow uh, for a printed circuit board, you can think of it as the basic physics model where you have a uh, hot reservoir on top, a cold reservoir on bottom, and connected together by a thermal conductor. And uh, this is done in uh, printed circuit boards by the signal trace being heated from RF heating as an assumption, and then the ground plane being attached to a heat sink, and the heat sink would be the cold reservoir. In this slide, I'm showing the, uh, the thermodynamic model of uh, what you'd see in a traditional physics book in the upper left-hand corner where you have a hot reservoir and a cold reservoir connected together by this thermal conductor. The formula here is actually as a reference just to give you an idea of how things can react. And uh, in the formula, you can see that K is the thermal conductivity. So that's how thermally conductive this conductor is that connects this hot and cold reservoir. And then the uh, temperature, T sub H, T sub uh, C, is the hot and cold reservoir temperatures themselves. And then L is the distance between them. Now, the bottom right portion of this uh, picture is a printed circuit board. And the printed circuit board has kind of the same format as the uh, heat flow uh, pattern in the upper left, where you can see that the signal plane is actually where the heat is assumed to be generated. And then the heat path is going through the substrate to the ground plane. The ground plane is attached to a heat sink, which is acting as the cold reservoir. Now, the heat flow going through the substrate, the substrate's acting as a thermal conductor. In reality, substrates in the printed circuit board industry are not very good thermal conductors. They're actually more of a thermal insulator. Uh, most substrates in the printed circuit board industry are, as I've said, a uh, thermal insulator, and they typically have thermal conductivity uh, values in the range of about 0.2 to 0.3 watts per meter per K. And as for a reference, uh, copper, which is a very good thermal conductor, has a value of about 400, so it's a pretty significant difference. Now, we do have at Rogers some materials that are much higher in thermal conductivity. Some of our ceramic-based uh, PTFE, ceramic-based uh, thermal set materials, have thermal conductivity values of 0 0.5, 0 0.6, even as high as 0 0.7, and these numbers are considered quite good. Uh, recently, actually a couple of years ago, we formulated a material that was very specific to thermal management, and that's RT Duroid uh, 6035 HTC, which has a very high thermal conductivity of about 1.44 watt per meter per K. Now, the other advantage with this material is also that it has very low dissipation factor. And when it comes to RF heating, generating less heat is an attribute of lower insertion loss. And to get lower insertion loss, you would have materials with a lower dissipation factor. And also, a smoother copper would be an advantage as well. Smoother copper gives less conductor losses, less insertion loss, which means less heat generated. And uh, even uh, another additional item that some engineers may not think about is dielectric constant. A lower dielectric constant material will allow the engineer to have a wider conductor when maintaining the same impedance. And the wider conductor will also give lower conductor losses and, again, lower insertion loss. And that's what you want to minimize the heat. Okay, this slide is showing excerpts from a study that we did several years ago. And uh, what we did was use 20 mil thick substrates to make circuits. And all the circuits were the same design. The uh, circuits were double-sided. and had a signal plane on top, ground plane on the bottom. The circuit, circuit was mounted to a plate that was then mounted to a water-cooled heat sink. And then a resistor mounted in the middle of the uh, signal trace was heated with uh, DC power. What we did was took thermal images after the system came to thermal equilibrium. And uh, you can see here on the slide in the upper left, 
a high performance, uh, high TGFR4 material had a heat rise of about 84 degrees C above ambient, and that's with a thermal conductivity of about 0.25 watt per meter per K. Then uh, to the right of that, the 4350B material, this is a ceramic filled hydrocarbon material, that had about a 56 degrees C rise above ambient, and that's got a thermal conductivity about 0.62 watt per meter per K. And then finally, the RT Duroid 6035 HTC material, that has a thermal conductivity of 1.44 watt per meter per K, and you can see that that has the lowest heat rise, about 36 degrees C above ambient. This concludes this session of Coonrod's Corner, and thank you for watching. For additional information and technical tools, if you are not already a member, join the Rogers Technology Support Hub and gain access to calculators, technical papers, and more of Coonrod's Corner and other informational videos. Rogers Technical Information is also available at your fingertips with the Raj mobile app, available for the iPhone, iPad, and Android devices. Check it out today.